Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Hyunjae Shin from the Seattle Asian American Film Festival. Thank you for joining us uh, for this Q&A. We have with us directors from our Selective Shorts program, Haru Haru, Day by Day, for an online Q&A about their respective films. We're very pleased to be screening their films during our festival from March 4th to March 14th on seattleaaff.org. We'll be doing a quick round of intros before getting into the questions, starting with Aaron. Awesome. Uh, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Aaron Field. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm the writer and director of the short film Hunk Show. And Christina? Hi, I'm Christina. Um, I go by she, her, and I'm the writer director of Mirror. Uh, Mayumi? I'm Mayumi Yoshida, and I'm the writer. No, I'm not. I'm the director. <laughs> <laughs> co-director of In Loving Memory uh, with Diana Bang, and the writer is Andrea Bang. Um, I go by she, her. Thank you. Uh, Han? Oh, uh, my name is Jehyun Park, and I'm a writer and director of Unpad. And lastly, Amanda. Hey, my name is Amanda Lynn Kim. I'm the animator and director of Heiju, and I go by she, her. Thank you again uh, all for making time to answer some questions about your films uh, and we'll get right into it. So the theme of this block, Haru Haru, translates to day by day. The films discussed in today's Q&A capture various snapshots of Korean American life, sometimes presenting issues that can be difficult to discuss. How do you feel your film touches on some of these subjects and how have your own experiences influenced the direction of your film? We'll start with uh, Christina. Sure, um, well, Mirror, explores you know the pressures of Asian beauty standards um, which is something that I felt I'm pretty sure everyone I know has every Asian American woman I know has felt um, and I just wanted to show that it is universal whether you are raised in Asia whether you're raised here um, the images that surround us do affect us and um, that's uh, that's kind of what I was trying to tackle in the film through the character. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Naomi? Um, I can't speak from a Korean American perspective, but I feel like something universal between like the Asian community is their relationship with their parents and their struggle with that. So our film uh, tackles that issue. Aaron? Um, my film, Hang Shio, is kind of from my own personal perspective growing up as a Korean American adoptee. Um, and I wanted to create a film that kind of bridged that gap between the experiences that I felt like I was missing out on not having that connection to my Korean culture and what are just normal experiences that everyone has. So the film's really a slice of life snapshot that the goal is really just to show that we all have universal similar experiences through love, family, and uh, all those kind of themes. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ian? Uh, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to show, I wanted to talk about uh, the Asian, like a Korean old woman, like who, like she is the first immigrant and she is not used to like, you know, she, I mean, like because of her, because of her language <coughs> issue, she can't really get uh, accustomed to like a American culture. And then she she just works so hard, and but when she grows up, when she gets old, then she when she gets like Alzheimer or dementia, and then she doesn't really she wants to go back to Korea because you know that's even where she grew up, but she can't really do that because of her family. So uh, I don't know. I just wanted to show how she would feel like because. I'm not Korean, I'm not like a Korean American, I'm actually a Korean filmmaker, like a who I, I came to the States to study filmmaking. So I could meet more like Korean, old Korean women. So I could talk to them. And then after then, and then I figured that like they're, they really wanna go back to Korea, but they can't because of their children and they're, when they're old. So I felt really sorry about that that point. So I wanted to talk about, you know, their, yeah. yeah their, thank you. Their, yeah. 
and Amanda. Um, yeah, so my film actually features a conversation between my grandmother and myself um, and it explores her story of immigrating here and her childhood escaping North Korea. Um, but there are moments where there is a generational difference and a cultural difference that shows that the conversation might have been difficult to come about. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. Um, another theme I think a lot of us can relate to is this uh, search for a sense of belonging, right? Um, when or where do you all feel like the most at home? Uh, and we'll start with uh, me and me. Um, it's, I think that theme is definitely something that I uh, tackle in a lot of my other work as well. Um, I feel I, I, I'm also an actor and I did this course, which was uh, a voice intensive and um, it was strange. There was like a moment of truth that came when we were doing a breathing exercise. It sounds so hippie, but uh, I, and then it felt like um, I belonged when I found connection to the people who I really, really are close to. So kind of like home where is where the person who you love are. Mm -hmm. So whether that's like in, in your hometown or, or the people who are here, like it's, uh, it's kind of become where my community is and where I connect with is my home. Great, thank you. Uh, Aaron, how about you go next? Yeah, um, I, I'd love to springboard off of that. I feel like community is such a huge part of what makes you feel comfortable, safe at home. Um, and uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm a Washington state born and raised uh, native, but I'm currently living in Los Angeles and I'm separated from my family right now because of obviously the circumstances that we're living under. Um, but at the same time, uh, I have my own community here and you, you can have multiple homes, different homes, depending on the communities that you find. And I think that's something that especially um, anyone that is Asian American or uh, came here, whether it was coming here to study or coming here, immigrating with your family or that kind of thing, you understand that um, home travels with you and it's not a place. And I think that's something universal that everyone kind of can agree upon. Definitely. Thank you. Amanda? It's interesting you say that because I'm biracial and I've always felt a little bit uh, detached from both sides. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I got the email to do this Q and A, I felt really like this really great sense of belonging where I was like, Oh man, this is, this is the block I'm going to be in. This is so awesome. So I appreciate that. It's just coincidental. Ian. Uh, uh, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another theme that a lot of us, uh, might, may be, may be able to relate to is this search for the sense of belonging. Uh, when and where do you feel the most at home? Um, <laughs> you know, I was in the States for 10 years. The before then, I was in, the, in Korea for more than 20 years. So like, you know, when I was in Korea, I mean, and I was in, when I was, but now I'm moving, I moved back to Korea. So like, a, it's been like a two year, almost two, uh, two years since I got back to Korea. And then but before then, when I was in the States, I thought, you know, I don't know, like because of my community, like you know, I um, my friends are mostly like you know they are filmmakers, and then they are, I mean, some of them are Asian Americans, but uh, other people like they are Americans. So I don't, I didn't really think about my like you know, uh, I don't know my, I didn't really think I am like. A, a Korean Korean mm -hmm. like you know what I mean yeah. like because I didn't really you know when I work with them or when I you know hang out with them I don't really have to think about that and that or I didn't really belong to Korea Korean Asian community in those in, in LA so but now I am back in Korea so I feel I belong to Korea so I, I don't know that's a really hard question but it's like you know uh, it's, it's, it depends on where I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy question to answer for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christina. Yeah. Um, I think that oddly 
the place that I've found myself feeling most at home is, I mean, not that I've had experiences living in so many different large cities, but for me, um, I've lived the most in New York, in New York City. And um, the fact that it's so diverse and that there's so many transplants and there's so many people from different cultures, it almost feels like um, there is no one type of person that needs to live in New York. And I'm sure this is the case in many cities and that like, we're all kind of a bunch of random folks living in that place. Um, and for that reason, I feel really at home there because it, there's no like one way to be or to look or to behave. Um, and I've lived in places that are less diverse and I was always kind of feeling the, the pressures of that. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. Uh, it's, it's not always an easy question to answer, especially when you feel like you belong in so many different places and yet people are saying that you're this or that you're only one thing when it can be true that you belong to many different places and you call many different places home. Um, so the next question is, uh, what was your favorite or most memorable aspect of the film creation process? And we'll start with Hien. <laughs> um, writing, actually, writing and editing. I, I guess I'm kind of like a little bit too nervous when I'm on set, but <laughs> I don't know my personality have like, I have different personality when I'm on set. So I can be very, you know, outgoing on set, but it, like, but personally, I'm not, out, I'm not an outgoing person. So I prefer, you know, working by myself, like at home and then like in the work writing, either writing or editing, but you know, like, you know, there is a beauty of like, you know, directing on set, but yeah. Cool, thank you. Uh, Amanda? I guess for me, it was doing the research because this is a personal story. So I was doing a lot of um, deep diving into Korea's history and then also my family's history. So um, part of my family is from America and actually, was in the Korean War on the US side. So I put like little tributes to them that are like Easter eggs in the film as well. So I, I enjoyed getting to learn more about both sides of my family. That's awesome, thank you. Uh, Aaron? Um, <clears throat> I got the amazing opportunity of, build, of casting uh, stand-ins for my own family and myself for this film, which was really exciting that I, I assume Amanda, you probably got to have the same experience um, but uh, I met some amazing actors, uh, David Jung, Annie Lee, Caleb John, um, who all became a nice little family in and of itself and a family for me as well. And having that relationship on set and feeling uh, not only uh, a connection as peers and colleagues, but also just growing on set as a small family in and of itself was an amazing experience. Um, but yeah, it was just a, it, it was almost therapeutic for me which um, filmmaking is just to some people an expensive form of therapy. So I'll take it as it is, but. All right, uh, Christina. Uh, I think for me, the, the most fun part was maybe casting and working with the actors for the first time for this one, because this is my one and only film so far that was fully Asian cast. And um, I had to find Korean speaking actors as well. So. Um, that was a fun challenge to do because there are not a ton of Korean fluent actors in New York um, compared to like otherwise, you know, English speaking actors. So it was really, it was just so great to see the script come to life and to put Asian Americans on screen um, the whole film. That's always a thrill to do. And so I think that was, yeah, that was my favorite part. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Mayumi. Um. I think the reason why I said writer at the beginning is because I always, whenever I'm making films, I'm wearing many hats. And this was maybe the first time I was only a director. So that was nice that, uh, and working with Diana and Andrea, like I had people to lean and, you know, exchange ideas and collaborate while we were creating this process. It was such a relief that there's someone to just bounce off ideas and say, what do you think? 
is this cool? Okay, let's do that. And then they would have new ideas. And so um, it wasn't a lonely, lonely process. <laughs> so that was nice. Yeah, it seems like everybody has multiple hats when they're creating their films. They're just not isolated to just director or writer. It's a very collaborative process of bringing in ideas and people from all different sorts of perspectives. So that's great to see. Um, for our next question, um, starting with uh, Christina, looking back to your filmmaking debut, what advice would you give to yourself before you started? Um, that's hard. I mean, there's so much, but I think for me personally, what's really helped me is getting honest critique from people that I trust. Um, because you can practice all day long, but if people are not telling you what you're not seeing to improve on, then it's it's honestly hard to improve, you know, to have that self-awareness yourself. Um, and if you have people that just hype you up, then it's also gonna get hard to get, um, you know, improve. So I really appreciate the, the professors that I've had um, and the friends who I trust, whose taste I trust, who say, hey, if I had to point out weak parts, this is what to, you know, work on. Um, and, and that's helped me a lot to kind of pinpoint things. So get the harsh truth <laughs> is what I would say. All right, Amanda. I was gonna say the same thing <laughs> to make sure to get more feedback. But for me, just making sure I got feedback outside of my class um, because they're so familiar with the story at this point just to get a fresh set of eyes. And also from people that are not necessarily like your best friend that you call all the time because you, you want the the harsh truth sometimes. Uh, Mayumi. Uh, to me personally, I think I would say I really didn't have uh, a good idea what a producer does. And now that I'm in development of my own things and seeing many other producers work, I'm seeing how much work involves in producing and um, yeah, appreciate them and say thank you to everybody who comes on set to do your work because uh, they don't get enough credit, so. Thank you, uh, Han. I would also say it's feedback from my friends and my, my colleagues and my family. And yeah, yeah, like other people said, like, you know, it's like, it's very hard to accept that in, in, the, in the beginning, but you know, like, you know, and then sometimes I get the same feedback, like when I, um, you know, like when I'm writing and or when I'm editing, we, we get feedbacks from people, right? And then they get like a different feedback and then sometimes I don't really get why they did that, why they did so specific feedback. So I don't know, it's hard, but it's very like, you know, pro productive or like very like helpful to like, you know, to, to go further pro to proceed my you know process so yeah it's really helpful getting feedback and difficult <laughs> yeah and aaron um i i think the one piece of advice that uh, a lot of us have probably heard before and that i've gotten a lot is always write your truth although um i know for me personally I'm still not entirely sure what my truth is. <laughs> um, and I think throughout every single film I make, I go in with an idea of what I want it to mean. And then when submitting to festivals, you have to do your little statement about, hey, what does this mean to you? I'm like, you know what? I'm not sure at this point. I have to rewatch and really think about that. Uh, mm -hmm. So yes, write your truth for sure. But it's okay to not know immediately. And it's okay to use that film as a sort of discovery of what that is. Um, so if you don't have it right away, there's a possibility that throughout making it, you'll figure it out. Cool. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of common themes of speaking your truth, but also learning to accept feedback from people that might be difficult to hear, but may also be really helpful in helping you form that truth. So appreciate all your answers for that. Uh, and lastly, uh, do you have any upcoming or future projects and where can people continue following your work? And we'll start with uh, Ian. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually I'm working on a feature uh, project and then, but uh, yeah, I'm writing it and then it's like a third draft right now. And 
I, I actually I'm not really like you know active on social media like Facebook or Instagram, so I can't really say. I wanna say I you guys like follow me on Facebook or Instagram and that's all. But it's, it's not all actually because I don't really do that. I I would put some post when I like a when my film like a show screen at festivals, and then I would post something. So I don't know. It's a hard. I was. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Um, right now, uh, obviously things are slowed down. So I've just been writing a bunch, um, hopefully having more projects coming out in the future. In the meantime, uh, all my stuff's on AaronFieldFilm.com. There's your little plug. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always writing. I'm always trying to work on new things. Um, I have a bunch of amazing collaborators, all uh, mostly international. Um, and we're very excited about some of the stuff that we have hopefully coming up soon. Cool, thank you. Uh, Mayumi? Um, I'm developing my first feature and uh, I think Diana and Andrea are, are creating something that I don't think I can talk about. So <laughs> it's then something cool is down the road for uh, them and hopefully all of us. And uh, I did a music video last year, directed a music video by Amanda Sum called Groupthink and it's on YouTube. So you can check that out and I'm on social media so you can just find me there too. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, uh, Amanda. I'm producing for the first time. So I felt that earlier comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> contracts <laughs> um but yeah so i'm working on two thesis projects that i'm helping to produce and yeah just checking along um you can find me on social media my name's pretty searchable or at a.com to the end of it cool and lastly christina yeah i'm in my last year of of grad school uh finally so i am pumping out two shorts this uh, this year. I'm shooting one next month, which is a horror short, which is um, new for me, but something I'm really interested in find very fun. Um, and then I'm doing my thesis film this summer in Korea. And um, I'm also almost finished in post with a film that I took forever on because of COVID craziness. Uh, so that's coming up. Um, yeah, and you can follow me on Instagram. It's ctina yoon. And my website is christina yoon.com. Yeah, so go check out all of these amazing directors, producers, writers, all of the different roles that we have here today. Um, make sure you go check out their past projects, their films at our festival, and also their future projects. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us today uh, on behalf of the ninth Seattle Asian American Film Festival. We really appreciate your support, and if you have not done so already, please take a moment to fill out our festival participant survey sent to your email. Filling out these surveys help us receive grants and sponsorships that make this festival possible. And it's also another way that you can support staff. And on behalf of the Seattle Asian American Film Festival, please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.